morning guys yesterday we talked about the fact that healing is a process and that we can have a tendency to focus on the process rather than the processor or the word or Jesus. Uh, and if we focus on the process judging the flesh and how things are going we can also have a tendency to define ourselves by the process. And the more long-standing uh, a supposed problem is, the more we have a tendency to define ourselves by that supposed problem. And the more we have a tendency to define others by uh, things in the flesh. How freeing to realize that what we feel and see is not who we are. And the more you can grab a hold of what I'm saying in your heart, the more you will know that you are not what you see and feel. If it looks like there are shortcomings in your life, if it looks like there are shortcomings in your body, whatever it may be, that is not you. You is, just trying to get the point across, no that's bad grammar, you is what the word says you are. I'll use that example in my life that means so much to me. Seems like it was a minor thing, but not to me. I'm going to share it with you again. Several years ago, it looked like I had the flu. It felt like I had the flu. And I woke up one morning, and my first thought was, oh, I feel better. And when I said that, the Holy Spirit said, you're not just better, you're healed. And that just slapped me in the face in a good way. It was a wonderful thing. He said, you're not just better, you're healed. You know, it looked like I um, had the flu. It felt like I had the flu. But the reality, what is actually real, what is actually true, is that in the midst of those symptoms, which are lies, I was healed. Healed, whole, saved, complete by what God wrought in Jesus Christ when he raised him from the dead complete, whole, saved. And that is a tremendous revelation because when it is revealed to you in your heart, it's alive. And when it's alive in your heart, you live from it. That's why you, that's why um, the focus should be on the heart. 
protecting the heart because that's where the life issues from is the heart and when you have a revelation of it it lives from within you and is greater than the life that is dying without so it's truly an amazing thing and and it's um, all the more reason for us not to pay attention to the flesh and more importantly not to define ourselves by the flesh this is an important example it, it might be a little grim but it's a good example I don't know if you've ever had the misfortune to watch someone pass. I have a couple of times. And you see and understand in a way maybe you couldn't before that the real person, once they pass, the real person the spirit and the soul that makes up that person, once they pass, that is gone. And all you're left with is dead flesh. That's not the person. That's not the person at all. Um, but I, I'm not trying to be grim. I'm just trying to illustrate a point that the real us is that spirit and soul that defines us. And the life in the heart of us issuing forth is who we are, not what we see, not what we feel. The more we can come to a realization of that, via the word the more we will focus on who we really are and the life of who we really are and the life in our hearts of who we really are according to what the word says will supplant the life of circumstances to the contrary And it's like I said yesterday that yes, healing, whether it be physical or whatever kind of healing, any kind of healing you need, is a process, but it is a process commandeered by the Holy Spirit because he knows who you are. He knows perfectly who you are, and he knows how to get that over to you. And so he works with the real you on the inside of you to reveal to you the reality of who you are now. Just as when I felt and saw those flu symptoms that was not me he was getting over to me the flu is not your identity your wholeness your completeness your saving that is your identity and so he does this the Holy Spirit does this work on the inside of us it's effortless for us and to be quite honest he's it's effortless for him you know why because it's done from the standpoint of perfect love and so when you love somebody perfectly it's just easy to guide them it's just easy to instruct them 
it's easy it's easy it's easy for the Holy Spirit and it's sure easy for you because all you have to do is listen with a hearing heart knowing that he's coming at you from perfect love and that as you listen he's transforming you from the inside out he's transforming you from the inside out because you be who the Word of God says you be and he is instructing you that you be that no matter what you feel no matter what you see as in the example of my supposed flu you be right now what the Word of God says you be another way <clears throat> to think about this is in terms of the law the word says that the law is pure and perfect and holy <clears throat> but man could not satisfy the law because the law is weak through the flesh the word says but God sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh condemn sin in the flesh Jesus became a curse for us and redeemed us from the curse of the law but the law as it was intended is pure and perfect and holy and so Jesus by fulfilling that law only made us subject to what is pure and perfect and holy he fulfilled the law now there, the law cannot be against someone who knows that he fulfilled the law and now we're only subject to the righteousness of the law because the law is pure and perfect and holy and the way that that is uh, manifested in our lives the righteousness of the law is via the righteousness of grace when we understand that because of what Jesus did that we are only subject to his righteousness he made us righteous we're only subject to his righteousness now via grace so we can receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness because we are no longer subject to the curse of the law all things are lawful and all things are right are lawful and all things are right <clears throat> let me give you an example of, of that actually <clears throat> working and I maybe I'll give you a couple examples um, of this actually working in my life you know I had been <clears throat> studying the Word of God in terms of righteousness and um, if you if you notice uh, righteousness and evil are exact opposites of one another in other words evil are trying to produce righteousness 
uh, in and of yourself, you can't do because uh, it's weak through the flesh. But, in other words, trying to produce right in and of yourself is evil. And anything that goes against the purity and the perfection and the love of the Word of God is evil. Anything that comes against you that is not a product of love, of pure love, is evil. So, understanding that, you can say, because of what God wrought in Jesus Christ, no evil for me, thank you very much. Because um, I'm not subject to that anymore because of what God wrought in Jesus Christ. And so, um, if something would come up uh, that looked like it might be a potential problem, I would just say to myself, no evil. No evil. And it became a habitual thing. And one day, I was paying bills online, and I went to pay a bill, and it said um, zero balance. Um, and this was a substantial bill. This wasn't a bill of five dollars. Um, but. Um, and it said zero balance. So I looked at it some more and it said, you know, it was clear that I didn't owe anything. And I wasn't going to argue. Trust me, I wasn't going to argue with that. Um, but I, I did investigate it a little further. And I discovered that this was a uh, credit card, which I don't recommend. Um, but what I mean by that is, you know, um, building up a um, credit card balance is what I'm saying. Do whatever you want to do. Uh, but I did investigate it further, and I discovered that this particular company had been audited. And the auditors had found in my case that they had overcharged me due to um, my being subscribed to their service. They were, because I was, uh, it was a sus subscription, they uh, somehow, as a part of that, had overcharged me. And so, as a result of that, um, not only did I have a zero balance, but I got some money back. Now, I believe in my heart that that happened because I had a revelation of no evil. Because Jesus Christ has made me his righteousness, and I am not subject to evil. Now, I wasn't even thinking about that particular situation because I had things in my life that, um, quote, looked more pressing. So I wasn't even thinking about that. It took me by complete surprise. But I do believe in my heart that it happened because in my heart, I had a revelation of no evil. Now, another example, which is near and dear to my heart, is one that happened uh, many years ago. Uh, I, there was this job I wanted, and I applied for it. And I don't, I don't usually go around saying, well, the devil said, but in this case, he did. He said, you know you're not going to get that job because of this or that or the other. And he laid out a case 
of, uh, of the things where I would not get that job. But then, just as he said that, the Holy Spirit said to me, but what about where I said I execute my righteousness for those that are oppressed? And I said, okay, I'll take that. And several days later, the company called me and offered me the job. Now, there's a lot going on here. His righteousness and his word and his truth are one. So when it says he executes his righteousness, what he is doing is he is manifesting his word in your life in the here and now. Um, now, he's already executed his righteousness fully when he spoke it. Because all the Father has to do is speak it, and it's done, let me tell you. And by the way, it's the same for us. When we have a revelation of what we're speaking, it's done. It's done, done, and done. But anyway, um, so I said, okay. I'll take that. And they offered me the job. And I had the opportunity to, uh, for it to be revealed to me sometime later what was actually going on and what um, the Lord had to do to get me that job. Because uh, I had a conversation with one of the people that were involved in making the decision many months later. And she said, you know, we had misgivings about giving you this job because of this or that or, or whatever. But um, anyway, so the Holy Spirit was just showing me what he had to overcome uh, in order to give me that job. Now, there was nothing against me in terms of receiving that job because the law having been fulfilled, there was nothing against me. It looked like there was, maybe it even felt like there was, but, but in reality, because of what Christ has made me his righteousness, his holiness. There's nothing against me. There's no curse against me. And so uh, when the Lord manifest his word, his righteousness in my life, in lieu of what it looks like there is against me, all he is doing is manifesting the word that reigns, the righteousness that reigns, the life that reigns. And that's another example of the manifestation of his righteousness because now that's all I'm subject to. All things are lawful, all things are right even when they don't look right, even when they don't feel right. And you know what? Because you have that revelation, you don't have to look for the evidence because the evidence, the life is in your heart and you will live for that. You will live from that. And evidence to the contrary will just die because evidence to the contrary is just a life that's dying. So I just wanted to encourage you this morning, talking about righteousness, talking about all things being lawful, all things being right, talking about that because the word is true, 
and perfect and whole. We don't have to look at the process. We can look at the processor, which is the Word of God, the living Spirit of God. So, I went on a little long this morning, but I hope it blesses you because it really blesses me. And I'll talk to you later. Bye. Well, we finally made it all the way through. I had a few technical difficulties this morning, but no matter. Um, I'm going to put this out there and hope that it's a blessing to you.